pre-trip inspection, the examiner is going to tell you this. We're going to do your pre-trip inspection for your CDL exam. We're going to start in the front of the vehicle. We're going to do the front of the vehicle, both sides of the engine compartment. Then we're going to do the driver's side of the vehicle down the entire length, the rear of the vehicle, and in the end cab. As far as axles are concerned, you only have to worry about three axles. One axle on the front, one axle on the drive, and one axle on the tandems. All right? At that point, he'll tell you to go ahead and get started if you have any questions. And, of course, if you have any questions during the test, make sure you ask. All right? <clears throat> so we'll start right out here in the front. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check our lights. I'm going to check my identification lights, which is the three in the middle, my clearance lights, my high beam lights, my low beam lights, and my pet lights. They're all properly mine secured. They're not cracked or broken. They're the proper color. I'm going to look underneath my engine compartment, make sure there's no excessive leaks. We're done in the front that quick. All right. Okay. At that point, we're going to come up and open our hood. And it just makes better sense to start over here on the passenger side. I'm going to try to stay out of y'all's way the best I can, all right? So on this side of the engine, I'm going to do an overall view of the engine. I'm going to make sure I don't see any excessive leaks. I don't see any leaky hoses. I don't see any frayed wires or loose wire connections, all right? Then I'm going to check my coolant reservoir. It's properly mine secured. It's not leaking. It's filled to the proper level and the cap is in place. I'm gonna check the jam nut on the front of my alternator to make sure it's properly mine secured and not loose. I'm gonna check my alternator belt to make sure there's no more than three quarters inch play and the belt's not uh, cracked or dry rotted. I'm gonna check my alternator to make sure it's properly mine secured, not missing any nuts or bolts. I'm checking my wiring harness on the alternator to make sure there's no frayed wires or any loose wire connections. I'm going to check my water pump to make sure it's properly mine secured, no signs of water leaks. I'm going to check my water pump belt to make sure there's no more than three quarters inch play and the belt's not cracked or dry rotted. I'm going to check my turbos and exhaust to make sure there's no signs of black soot, which would indicate an exhaust leak. Make sure that there's no oil leaks on the turbos. All right, everybody good? Because we're doing on this side. I'm to stay out of your way the best I can. You got two options right here. I can tell the examiner I'm doing an overview just like I did on the other side. If I tell him that, it's done. All right? Or I can just do the overview. I'm doing an overview of the side of my engine block, make sure I don't see any excessive oil leaks. Checking all my hoses to make sure there's no abrasion bulges or cuts, no signs of leaks. I'm looking at all my wiring harnesses to make sure there's no frayed wires or loose wire connections. Or I could have just told him I'm doing an overview just like I did on the other side. All right? I'm gonna start with my oil level. I'm gonna check my oil level to make sure it's filled to the proper level. I'm gonna pull it out, wipe it off, stick it back in. It should be between the ad and the field. All right? You don't have to physically do that. If I'm gonna put oil in the truck, I'm gonna put it in right here. It's measured in gallons and not quarts. I got a fuel station is my internally driven air compressor. It's properly mine secured, no signs of leaks. Now, when we're talking about leaks sitting right here with the truck not running, we're talking about oil leaks, all right? Because the truck's not running, so there won't be any air leaks, okay? From here, I'm gonna come on back and I'm gonna check my power steering reservoir. It's properly mine secured, filled to the proper level, no signs of leaks. I'm gonna check my power steering hoses. There's no abrasion bulges or cuts in my hoses, no signs of leaks, and all my clamps are in place, all right? I'm gonna check my steering rod and my steering knuckle. They're properly mine secured. They're not damaged, not twisted. Steering knuckle is properly lubricated. My steering box is properly mine secured, not missing any nuts or bolts, no signs of leaks. From here, I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna check my pitman arm, my castle nut, my drag link, my rear pitman arm, and my tie rod. They're all properly mine secured. There's no signs of damage. They're not bent, cracked, or broken. No missing nuts or bolts. All right, everybody good? So, suspension system, I'm gonna do my spring hanger, it's properly mine, or not my spring hanger, my control arm mount. It's properly mine secured, not missing any nuts or bolts. My control arm is properly mine secured, it's not bent or twisted. My U-bolts are properly mine secured, no signs of looseness. 
My shock absorber is properly mounted in skewer top and bottom with no signs of leaks. If it's going to leak, it's going to be leaking right here under the sleeve. All right. My airbag is properly mounted secure top and bottom. No signs of abrasion bulges or cuts on the airbag. No signs of leaks. All right. Everybody good with that? All right. We're done with that part of it. What's next? What do we come to next? My airlines. My airlines are properly mounted secure. No abrasion bulges or cuts. No signs of leaks. My brake chamber. Properly mounted secured, no signs of damage, no missing nuts or bolts. My push rod and slack adjuster. Properly mounted secured, no signs of damage. Can you see my hand right here? Mm -hmm. There's two pins right here. I got my fingers on both of them. Those are the two pins we were talking about inside the classroom. So not missing any pins, not missing any carter pins. So the carter pins, these are the nut side over here, the head side, the carter pins are over on this side. Everybody see what I'm talking about? Got two pins here. So my push rod and slack adjuster is properly mounted secured, no signs of damage, not missing any pins or keys, no more than one inch free travel. Now that push rod and slack adjuster activates a set of what? They sit inside a brake drum. What's that? My brake pads. You're not going to be able to see your brake pads on this front axle because I got dust covers on them, but you still got to call them. My brake pads are properly mounted secured, at least a quarter inch thick, square, not rounded, not cracked or broken. Those brake pads sit inside of what? Brake drum. My brake drum, no damage, no illegal welds, no oil or grease. All right. From that, what's next? Wheel and tire assembly. So we're gonna check our inner and outer sidewalls. There's no abrasion bulges or cuts. There's no signs of damage. I've got four 30 seconds tread depth, even tread wear, no recaps. My inner and outer rims, no damage to the rims, no illegal welds. My lug nuts are all properly mounted secured. No shiny threads or any loose or rust trails which would indicate looseness. My hub seal is properly mounted secured with no signs of leaks. My valve stem is properly mounted secured, no damage, the cap is in place, and my tires are inflated to the manufacturer's recommendation on the side of the tire. Moving along to the driver's side of the truck, we're gonna check our driver's side mirror. It's properly mounted secured. The glass isn't cracked or broken, and it's clean. We're going to check our door latch to make sure the door latch works properly. We're going to lift up and down on the door to make sure the hinges are tight. We're going to make sure our weather trim is properly mounted secure with no abrasion bulges or cuts. We're going to make sure our steps are properly mounted secure, nothing that will cause a slip, trip, and fall. We're going to check our left turn signal and four-way flasher is properly mounted secure, proper color, not cracked or broken. We're gonna reach inside here and grab this pin. We're gonna, you gotta pull the pin and open the door at the same time. Might wanna hang on to it. The door is properly mined secured, no signs of damage. The weather stripping's in good conditions, no abrasion bulges or cuts. I've got three reflective triangles. I've got a 5BC fire extinguisher fully charged, 10BC for hazmat. I've got spare electrical fuses. No signs of damage to my fuel tank. There's no fuel leaks. My fuel tank straps are properly mined secured with rubber to metal, not metal to metal. These are rubber gaskets behind these straps. My fuel cap is in place. My seal's in good condition. My T-bar and chain are present. We come to the rear of the tractor. We start at the top and work our way down. My DOT reflective tape is clean and present. My vertical exhaust stack and my exhaust stack mount are properly mined secure with no missing nuts or bolts. There's no signs of damage. There's no signs of exhaust leaks, which would be black soot. We come over to our tractor protection valve, make sure it's properly mined secure with no signs of damage. 
From our tractor protection valve, we move to our emergency and service lines. There's no abrasion bulges or cuts in the air lines. They're properly mass secured. They're not dragging the frame rail. My electrical line is properly mass secured, not dragging the frame rail with no signs of frayed wires. If we turn around and go ahead and check our glad hands, we make sure our glad hands are properly mass secured. Grommets are in place. Our electrical pigtail is properly mass secured. Seven holes for seven pins with no signs of corrosion. All right. I'll check our steps and our catwalk to make sure they're properly mass secured. Nothing that will cause a slip, trip, and fall. We're going to check our frame rails and our cross members. Properly mass secured, not bent or twisted, no illegal welds. We're going to check the drive shaft to make sure it's properly mass secured, not twisted or bent. We're going to check our rear universal joint and our front universal joints to make sure they're properly mass secured and tight. All right. We're going to check our splash guard to make sure it's properly mass secured. No missing nuts or bolts, no signs of damage. Who's my examiner? You my examiner? You're the examiner. I'm checking these brakes just like I did on the previous axle. All right, there's a brake can here. If you can't see that one, there's one right there. So I'm checking these brakes just like I did on the previous axle. There's my control arm mount. I'm checking this suspension system just like I did on the previous axle. All right, they're exactly the same. We've already established that, right? Okay. I'm checking my wheel and tire assembly just like I did on the previous axle with the exception of. I'm making sure I've got at least two thirty seconds tread depth on the back tires. Even tread wear, no mismatched tires. I've got at least two inches of gap between the tires. And my rims are butted together properly. All right. I'm also checking my axle seal to make sure my axle seal is properly mass secured, no missing nuts or bolts, no signs of leaks. All right. Now, at this point, I don't have to go back through the lug nuts and the rims and the air pressure because it's exactly the way it was on the front tires. And I've already established that I'm doing it exactly like I did on the front tires with the exception of, right? Does everybody follow me on that? Now, the one thing that I do have to warn you about, if you choose to go that method and you did miss something on that front axle, you're gonna miss it on this axle as well, okay? So let's just not worry about that and let's get that front axle, front brakes, and front wheel done right, okay? Yeah. Now, before I move on, I'm gonna check the top of my trailer, make sure my clearance lights are properly mass secured, they're not cracked or broken, proper color. I'm checking my headboard to make sure there's no damage to my headboard. I'm checking my DOT reflective tape to make sure it's clean and present. Okay? I'm gonna step over here to the side. I'm gonna look down the side of my trailer. Make sure I don't see any fresh damage to the side of my trailer. I'm looking at my DOT tape. It's clean and present down the entire length of the trailer. I'm looking at my frame rail rivets down on the bottom of the trailer to make sure none of those rivets are shaved off or missing. Okay? Good? All right, here we go. We're going to come right here and start on our fifth wheel. Let's identify some parts right quick. This is my trailer apron. This big metal plate on the front of the trailer is the trailer apron. The top of the fifth wheel is referred to as the fifth wheel slide plate. This is your release arm. The platform that the fifth wheel sitting on top of it is just that, the fifth wheel platform. These bolt, nuts and bolts holding it to the frame are the mounting bolts for the fifth wheel, all right? So when we inspect this, we're gonna inspect that trailer apron to make sure there's no damage to the trailer apron. We're gonna make sure there's no gap between the trailer apron and the top of the fifth wheel. We're gonna make sure the fifth wheel slide plate is properly lubricated with grease. We're making sure the release arm is in the lock position. The fifth wheel platform is properly mined secure with no signs of damage. The fifth wheel mounting bolts are properly mounted secure with no signs of looseness. All right, good. As I'm gonna look up into the back of that fifth wheel, I can see my fifth wheel kingpin is properly mounted secure. I can see my locking jaws wrapped around the shank of the kingpin and not the head. 
all right? You can't call that from out there beside the truck because you're not looking at it. If you're not looking at it, you ain't inspecting it, right? Right. All right. Y'all see up in that bevel on the back of that fifth wheel? You can see the king pin hang. You can see the king pin up in the top. Mm -hmm. And then you see a square piece of metal coming across the back of that king pin. That's your locking jaw. Good? I'm going to check my, re my rear pant lights and brake lights. They're red in color. They're not cracked and broken. I'm checking my mud flaps. They're properly mine secure, not missing any nuts or bolts. I'm checking my DOT tape to make sure it's clean and visible across the back of the tractor. I'm right here at my landing gear. So I'm going to check my landing gear, make sure it's properly mine secure with no signs of damage. There's no missing nuts or bolts. My landing gear feet are raised to the proper level, which is all the way up. There's no debris on the top of the landing gear feet. While I'm under here, I'm gonna check all my trailer frame rails. Make sure they're properly mined, secured, not cracked or broken, no signs of damage to the trailer floor. Then I'm gonna come out. Make sure my landing gear crank arm is in the stowed position and properly mined and secured. All right. Now, we've already covered the whole side of the trailer. We did that from up there at the corner, right? So we can just start making our way back. My left turn signal, four-way flashers, proper mind secured, it's not cracked or broken, proper color. All right, so I'm gonna get under here and I'm gonna tell my examiner a couple things. First thing is I'm checking these brakes just like I did on the previous axle. Second thing is I'm checking this suspension just like I did on the previous axle. I'm checking my trailer slide rail is properly mind secured, is not damaged. My locking pin is in the lock position. My release arm is in the lock position. I'm checking this wheel and tire assembly just like I did on the previous axle with the exception of. I'm checking my hub seal to make sure it's filled to the proper level. Properly mine secured, no signs of leaks. All right? So, somebody tell me what's wrong with that hub seal. It's cracked. Somebody's cracked it, and it's gotten, it's been cracked since last week. Somebody, it wasn't cracked last week. All right. We're going to check our door hanger to make sure it's properly mine secured. We're going to check our mud flap to make sure it's properly mine secured, no signs of damage, not missing nuts or bolts. We're gonna check our rear clearance light. It's properly mine secure, not cracked or broken in proper color. If it's on the rear, it should be what color? Red. red. Rear equals red. If we come on back to the back of the trailer, we start at the top and we work our way down. We're gonna check our latches at the top. They're properly latched. DOT tape is clean and present at the top. Looking at all of our hinges, they're properly mine secured, not missing any nuts or bolts. My doors are latched at the bottom. My door latches are stowed properly. My door hangers are pre or the door chains are present at least three inches long. DOT tape is clean and present across the rear of the vehicle. My identification lights are properly mine secured, not cracked or broken, proper color. My inside lights are my brake lights and running lights, red in color, not cracked or broken. My outside lights are my four-way flashers, turn signals, and running lights, red in color, not cracked or broken. My tag light is white in color, not cracked or broken, visible from 25 feet. All right, we're done with the outside. All right, so once we get in the cab, the examiner will get in with you. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna not only put our seat belt on, but we're gonna inspect it, make sure it's properly mounted, secured, it's not cut or frayed. Unlike this one, we're going to make sure that it latches and unlatches properly. Then we're going to make sure the truck's in neutral. We're going to push the clutch pedal all the way to the floor, perform a safe start, and crank your engine. We're going to let the clutch out nice and slow, make sure it is actually in neutral. And then we're going to go ahead and start our inspection while we give the truck a chance to do what it's supposed to do. I'm going to check my mirrors to make sure they're properly adjusted for me. I'm checking my windshield to make sure there's no illegal cracks. It's clean and free of obstructions. 
I'm checking my weather seal to make sure there's no signs of leaks, no abrasion bulges or cuts. I'm checking my windshield wipers to make sure there's rubber to glass and not metal to glass. At that point, I'm gonna drop down and start on my dash. I'm gonna come across the dash. The first thing that comes to me is my four-way indicators. I'm gonna make sure my four-way indicators are working. I'm gonna make sure that my oil pressure is between 30 and 60. I'm gonna make sure that my temperature gauge rises as the truck warms up. I'm gonna check my voltmeter. If the voltmeter is not showing up on the screen, push this button until your voltmeter shows up. Your voltmeter should be reading between 14 and 13. I'm gonna check my air pressure gauges and make sure I'm building air pressure. I'm looking to build between 120 and 125. If I work my way on across this dash, there's nothing else that needs to be inspected right now. So like a typewriter, we're gonna drop down to the next line and come all the way back across. So right over here, this whole cluster of switches, nothing to be inspected. Don't have to worry about it, none of this. We come to the steering column and work our way up the steering column. We're gonna check our left turn signal indicator, our right turn signal indicator, and our high beam indicator. All right. We're going to continue to work our way up the steering wheel. We're going to check the city horns. We're going to check the road horn. The road horn will blow when the air pressure gets above 80. We'll come over here to our windshield wipers. We'll check the windshield wipers to make sure they work. We'll check the washer fluid to make sure it works. We come on down to the dash and work our way across. We're going to check our defrost. We're going to turn it to defrost mode. Turn the fan on, make sure we got air moving on the dash. We're gonna turn the fan to heat, make sure we got air moving on the floor. Just so you know that when you check to see that there's air moving in this truck, there will be no air moving because there's no fan, all right? Everybody good with that? All right, so at this point, what do we have left to do? The brake test, right? The brake test is the parking brakes, service brakes, leaks, alarms, and buttons. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and bring my RPMs up so I build my air pressure quicker. If you just put it on the floor, it won't go any higher than 1,400 RPMs, so that's fine. So while we're waiting on the air pressure, let's do the end cap again. First thing I did was my seat belt. Then I made sure the truck was in neutral, pushed the clutch pedal all the way to the floor, cranked the engine. Then I checked my mirrors to make sure they were properly adjusted. My windshield, no illegal cracks, no obstructions, windshield's clean. Weather trim, no signs of leaks, no abrasion bulges or cuts. Windshield wipe or rubber to glass, not metal to glass. Started on my dash, check my four-way indicators, they work. Make sure my oil pressure is between 30 and 60. Make sure my temperature rises as the truck warms up. My voltmeter reads between 14 and 13. My air pressure gauge are building air, looking for 125 or 120 to 125. Nothing else on this dash right now. Nothing over here on this corner, on these uh, buttons. Up the steering column, left signal, right signal, high beam indicator, up the steering column to the steering wheel, city horn, road horn, over to the windshield wipers. Wipers work, washers work. Turn it to defrost. Make sure I've got air on the dash, turn it to heat, make sure I've got air on the floor. Go ahead and build your air pressure up. 20 pounds of pressure. So I'm going to start my brake test. All right. First gear and I'm going to leave it there for the rest of the test. That means you're going to have to sit here and hold this clutch in. I'm going to check my parking brakes first. It makes no difference what order you do this in. I'm going to push in the red valve and release my trailer. I'm going to ease the clutch out just till I feel a little tug. And then I'm pushing the clutch back in. I'm gonna set my trailer brake, release my tractor. Now I'm gonna check my trailer brakes. Little tug, make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Now I'm gonna check my service brakes. I'm gonna push both buttons in. I pushed them both in. We're not pulling them back out, right? All right. I'm gonna to explain to the examiner because it takes about 10 minutes to charge that trailer back there to get it to move that I'm gonna roll the truck forward at five miles an hour. I'm gonna push in the clutch and hit the brakes. The truck should stop. It shouldn't pull left or right, all right? So now my truck's in first gear. 
Both my buttons are pushed in. I'm going to shut the engine off, release my clutch, turn my accessories back on. Dash lights. This is what the examiner needs to hear now. I'm going to apply 90 pounds of pressure for one minute. I shouldn't lose any more than 4 PSI. So I apply 90 pounds of pressure. The examiner is going to say your minute's up. Now I need to make sure my warning lights come on at or before 60 PSI. So I'm going to start fanning my brakes. My warning lights are on. Now I need to make sure that my buttons pop out between 20 and 40. I'm going to continue to fan the brakes. Both the buttons have popped out and I'm done with my pre-trip inspection.